Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Little Nightmares 2 video and before we get into this video I want to warn you right away that there are going to be spoilers for Little Nightmares 2. So only watch this video if you already have completed the game or, or at least watched my playthrough of it or again play it yourself because there are going to be a lot of big spoilers coming if you haven't. So everyone's warned with that out the way let's get to the video. So Everyone that has played or wants to be spoiled, let's recap what has happened at the end of Little Nightmares 2. So, of course, towards the end of Little Nightmares 2, we see Mono enter the signal tower to pursue Six after he defeats the Fin Man. Mono finds himself in some trouble as he's trying to navigate around the signal tower's environment. Luckily, he is guided by the music box that we can hear coming from each of the doors. The music aids him, as it shows him the way to go for him to find Six. But my, do we get a surprise when he does. Now, it's no secret that we were going to be shown some scene that represented the diorama that was sold by Bandai. And of course, you all know the one I'm referring to. The Monster Six. Well, our biggest nightmares were confirmed. After following the music box sound, Mono finds Six in a room in her monstrous form. And in front of her is the music box playing the sound we have been chasing all this time. In the room where Six resides, we see a lot of interesting features and art. For instance, without going into too much detail, we see a painting of the young girl from the moor with her eyes scratched out. And the suitcase that Six starts the game Little Nightmares in. And of course, a large selection of toys. But that's about the only normal thing about this room. When Mono startles Six, she begins to move and grab the music box, for some reason protecting it. Interestingly, Mono has to call out to Six. And when he does, she hesitates, moves out of the way, and more towards the door. So Mono can go past. Mono grabs the hammer and proceeds to smash the music box. This shatters the hammer and causes Mono and Six to fall back as something more than just the hammer broke. A connection of some sort, maybe the transmission connection or the connection that they made along the way between each other. As a result of this, Mono wakes in a large empty room with nothing and no one around him. This doesn't last long though, as he returns back to the room with Monster Six. Now she isn't happy. She grabs the music box and a chase begins between them. And this is happening as the world around them is crumbling. Throughout the chase you can hear the hurt in Six's voice and the desperation and pain that Mono's betrayal has caused her. Side note, this is just an ending explained video, but I do want to do some more videos in the future about some of these specific scenes. So if I don't touch upon now, I will be touching upon them at some point in the future. Anyway, the chase ends with Mono hiding under a table as Six moves on. We next see an axe waiting in a door. Mono uses the axe to break open the door, very similar to the starting level with the hunter. Behind the door is Monster Six prepared to fight Mono and protect her music box. The fight ensues until we are given the last blow and this music box is broken and battered. But still playing, Monster Six tries one more time to defend the box, but Mono does one more call out and hits the box for the last time. The music box looks like it's reversing, reverse playing. As this happens, Six returns to somewhat normal. When Mono and Six both get up from the battle, Six looks at Mono, but this look is rather unsettling. They stand together, and then the real nightmare begins. The room starts to close in. The eyes start to come out. Six and Mono run. They both come to a bridge, and Six makes it across. Time slows down. The bridge breaks. Six looks back as Mono runs as fast as he can to try and make it, and now he solely relies on Six's help once again. Mono jumps. Six catches him. As the music fades, Six lets go, letting Mono fall into the abyss without any remorse. 
she gets up and walks into the transmission portal out. The music plays and the camera fades out. The camera comes back, fading from black, and we see Mono is in an area similar to the one with the eyes in the paintings. Mono runs for a little bit before coming to a chair. Mono climbs onto the chair. If this chair looks familiar to you, you're right, because it's very closely resembling the one from Little Nightmares, where the hanging man was, but it's not that. The eyes start to surround Mono, and all Mono can do is cover his eyes. It seems now Mono has become a part of whatever the eyes are, or a part of the signal tower. We see Mono sitting in the chair as the camera fades out to black and he's gotten a little older and a little taller. The camera fades in and out for a few times, basically showing us that Mono is getting older. And as the time ticks away, and once the camera fades to black for the last time, Mono has become the Fin Man waiting on the chair. And an interesting thing to note here, Mono was last covering his eyes, and the Fin Man always has his eyes closed. So we can see whatever Mono was doing at the last moments, he carried over to him in the Fin Man. And thus, he waits on his chair while the door closes on him. And yes, this door is the door that Mono was running through throughout the entire game. So what does this mean? Exactly what we see it means. Mono is the Fin Man. I was shocked and completely blown away by this as it is the last person we ever thought the Fin Man could be. This is the first time in the Little Nightmare series we see a child grow into not only a full adult, but what we perceive as the enemy. This revelation makes you see the game in an entirely completely different light. The Fin Man wasn't trying to hurt Mono, he was trying to stop him from continuing the cycle making the same mistakes, preventing him getting hurt by Six. This seems to be why he also captures Six, and I think this is why she has that monstrous form, as it's a warning from the Fin Man to Mono that she is the monster. It seems a mix of revenge and protection to his younger self. I don't believe that Mono replaces the Fin Man, or... Is it a new Fin Man? For the reasons being, Mono is the one to have control over the transmission's TV signals from the start. If you break the signal when Mono is trying to travel through the TV signal, he actually does an action we only see the Fin Man do. And not to mention, Mono gets the same particle effect that happens to the Fin Man when the TV signals start screeching out for him to touch and assign them and he also collects the glitches. It's hard to determine if Comic 6 may be trying to tell us that Mono wasn't always able to do these things. But by looking at the enemy that seems to be standing at Mono's broken TV, it doesn't look like the Fin Man at all. In fact, it doesn't look like anyone we know, apart from the one shadowy photo we see on the Moore's TV signal looking like it's about to snatch a child out of their bedroom. Is Six really just a monster? I don't think she is, and here's why. Six just seems like another child trying to survive in the environment that she is given. It's hard to determine a monster in this world when everyone, including the enemies, seems to be doing just what they need to to survive. It seems to be a cycle. The enemies captured by the children to creating more enemies, of a more corrupt world, it's cause and effect. Where Mono's intentions of saving Six was good, Six in the state she was in saw Mono as a threat. When she was trying to protect her music box and felt betrayed when he was even breaking it. We can see this by her behavior. When Mono first sees her, she's clutching the music box for comfort. And when Mono yells out to her, it almost pierces her ears. But she doesn't attack him. In fact, she scoots forward and actually puts the music box down for Mono to be able to see it. At this moment, if you get too close, she doesn't harm you or doesn't aim to. She just budges you away from her. 
But as soon as Mono hits her music box and you see it hurt six, things change between them drastically. Even though Mono was just trying to help Six and save Six from this monstrous form she had taken after being captured by the Thin Man. What I find interesting is, wow, is after Mono is able to break the music box, watch Six change. Now I look back, I can't believe I didn't see it coming. Notice how after becoming normal Six again, she cuts Mono a dry, cold look and with a very threatening stance with him. As if she was ready to do what she did to that one bully in the school chapter after they captured her. Six actually seems angered by the fact Mono saved her. As if Six wanted to be there or felt she needed to stay there. Or was it because she reached out her hand before the Finn Man took her away and Mono didn't try and help her? Either way, we're not happy with you Six. Six betraying Mono and letting him fall into the abyss of the signal tower creates the Finn Man cycle. We know time is strange in this game. We can see when Mono defeats the Finn Man, you see buildings reverse, bend, twist. They bend back as if time is actually being reversed. This is also highlighted when the Finn Man is chasing Mono. Time seems to slow down and everything goes into slow motion. The real question we should be asking is, does it only affect Mono and the Finn Man? And it seems to be some type of time dilation. As we see when they come close to each other, it affects the world around them. And in their little bubble, they slow down. Not only this, but to back up our idea of time dilation, it explains why the time in the school is different from the time in the hospital. The more we get closer to the signal tower, time dilates. But this is another theory topic in itself. So I digress. The ending has opened so many doors on who these children are and who they could become. I feel like they didn't just reveal Mono's identity, but they revealed the possibility of Sixes too. Again, this is going to have to have its own video where we go more into topic, but for Mono, his fate is sealed. And it will be again and again, and in an endless cycle of pain and misery, while the Finn Man waits for him in his chair, Mono will unlock a part of himself by entering the door in the transmission. Maybe turning into what he is most scared of. But unfortunately, Mono is not aware that the Finn Man is trying to protect him from the same outcome the world has made him suffer. Maybe one day the cycle might change. But in a world that's so twisted and dark, rarely thoughts of hope survive maybe something has to change but where will it begin who will break the cycle anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this explanation video and i hope you enjoyed the answer i gave you or at least alluded to and i hope you enjoyed little nightmares too as much as i did let me know what you think in the comments below and remember to like this video and hit subscribe if you want some more little nightmares 2 content and believe me there is going to be a good amount coming also, I'm all ears to any suggestions you guys want to talk about. I'm really focused on a lot of the theories I've got going at the moment. But with that being said, thank you to all the members of the channel that support. Thank you ever so much to everyone for liking, watching, even joining in as a community. It really means a lot to me. And it's really nice to see a nice little pocket of the internet where we all enjoy something as beautiful and dark as Little Nightmares too. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely morning, day, or night, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe, and I will see you all in the next Little Nightmares 2 video.